Hello, everybody. My name is Dave Walton. I work for a company called NetStock, and we market an um, inventory optimization cloud based um, solution. And the reason that we exist is that all ERP systems, the vision and business central included, um, is a little suboptimal in terms of being able to optimize your inventory. And um, that, that's why we exist. And I just want to share my screen just to uh, have a look at a few slides just to, to set the scene uh, and talk to you about NetStock as a business. So we're a global business and my Wi-Fi can catch up. Um, and we've been around since 2011. We've got uh, more than 1,750 customers globally. Um, and we're planning on a daily basis, forecasting on a monthly basis, more than 88 million stock keeping units. Uh, helping them optimize in excess of nine billion pounds worth of inventory, 15 and a half thousand users logging in on a daily basis. And of course, what that means is on any browser, on any device. And the things that people look to us to help solve is typically they've got too much of the wrong inventory, too little of the right inventory. They're trying to do forecasting and planning in Excel, which is not only difficult, time consuming, it's also very risky. Google reckons that 88% of all spreadsheets have an error in them, affecting what the spreadsheet is trying to deliver. And planning spreadsheets can get pretty complex, just increasing that risk. Now, in Excel, it's pretty difficult to get, um, you know, really complex around the order trigger. So often, many items, items from the same supplier, for example, are treated similarly from a re reorder point perspective. But when we consider each individual item, its inventory risk is unique to that item. And we measure that. It's a function of the supplier risk and the demand risk. Uh, and those two uh, pieces of analysis for every item in every warehouse are an input to our safety stock calculation. But it means that all these things that this poor guy is wrestling with means that he doesn't have sufficient time to do value added tasks. Now we solve those and uh, therefore deliver some benefits. So typically our customers enjoy a reduction in inventory, which of course releases working capital back into the business to spend on other things, but at the same time, an improvement in off the shelf availability. Two biggest ones from an ROI perspective, the most common reason our prospects become customers is the third one because all of those perpetual spreadsheet machinations that you're going through, uh, we do all those calculations whilst you're tucked up in bed asleep. And we do them by basically addressing a couple of key questions. The top one, the simpler one of the two, if you like, is what do we need to replenish today and over time uh, to keep us at our optimal inventory levels? And there's a lot of science built into that process. The second one, what needs attention today? For example, items where you've got too much, too much on order, you're stocked out, you're going to stock out until the next delivery. So if you think about this, this is the, the day in the life of a planner stroke buyer. Um, so that, that's all I wanted to just show from a slide perspective. So um, obviously in the time allotted, we don't have time to really deep dive everything. But I just wanted to show you a few pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, uh, one of which, and very intrinsic in NetStock, is item classification. So we're doing two lots of classification, one based on um, units at a fiscal input to give us ABC, and another one where we're just focusing on units to give us a velocity rating, high, medium, low. We put them together in this two-dimensional matrix, um, obviously plotting ABC down the left, low, medium and high across the top. And I said it was very intrinsic and that's because we're doing it for two reasons. One is quite obvious, it's importance. These fellas being much more important than these, right? But the second reason that we do it is more important still because this forms the starting point, but you can overwrite this right the way down to an individual item level for applying the policy power parameters that are inputs to the min-max levels. One is the desired service level expressed as a target fill rate. And obviously the higher you set that up to 100%, the more safety stock we calculate to buffer the item's supply risk 
and demand risk. And the second one, replenishment cycle, the frequency with which you replenish it. Now, the reason this is so important is it basically is establishing the business's inventory strategy. What level of service do, does it want to supply to its uh, customers? And therefore, we can tell you how much inventory you should have on the shelf on average, expressed as this model stock here. And everything that we do in NetStock is driving every item to its model stock. And then the dashboard are the items that are deviant from that model that need attention, the excess items. Items that may or may not already be in excess, but we've got too much on order, triggering, please, Mr. Supplier, can I cancel, delay, or reduce? These ones are already stocked out, and we kind of scale the problem about the, the potential loss of cost of sales. These ones are in stock, but they're going to run out before the next delivery. Same calculation to scale these. These are driving the expedite supply process. And if you're able to do that on these ones, such that the customers don't feel a thing, well, isn't that a great benefit? So there's more on here that's uh, pretty useful, but uh, hopefully you can see that's very visual and the kind of information that you need to be improving your lot. But let's have a look at an item quickly. So if you've got uh, multiple warehouses in your own supply chain, we can see this item in other locations together with the demand for the item in those locations, what's in stock, what's on order, the dashboard status as well. And then we can obviously navigate to the item as well. But um, this is some static data that we're either receiving from Navstroke Business Central um, or we're populating. Um, we've got a, a tournament-based statistical forecasting engine. So we're predicting the future based on the, the history of the item. And you can amend that as well, both at a, a, an individual item location level and at a macro level and blow them down. Um, and then this here, this is where all the clever stuff gets pulled together. So the desired service level, the lead time that we pull in from the ERP system, and there is a textbook formula to derive the number of days of safety stock that you need to deliver this fill rate in this lead time. But as I said before, we, we analyze this one, uh, the supply performance is fine. We haven't had to add or subtract some days of safety stock, subtract it if they deliver early, typically. But there is a tendency to sell a bit more than forecast. So we've buffered that with an extra day of safety stock, which boils down to the need for 28 days of safety stock and this one is replenished every two weeks. This is basically establishing some levels. We take those levels and turn them into quantities up here. So we look at the demand in the lead time, which may be some ongoing forecast for the product. Could be some firm sales orders that have not been allocated yet. Um, and we apply forecast consumption to that element. But we can see what the demand is in our lead time. We then cycle through and look at the demand in the safety stock periods, day, day, days 41 through 68 in this case. There's a further 15, blah, blah, blah in that period. Your lead time and safety stock added together is your classic lead order point. Uh, then we look at the replenishment cycle, what's two weeks worth of demand from day 69 through 82. In this case, and there's a further 7503 demand in that period. We add that the replenishment cycle demand to the reorder point, <coughs> excuse me, to give us our order up to quantity. So that is the min reorder point and max on this item right now. We calculate it every time we refresh the engine. We know the stock on hand, we subtract any past due sales orders because this is all forward looking. That gives us an available stock. We add in any open purchase orders, manufacturing orders, uh, transfer orders depending on the supply method for this item in this location. That gives us a net stock. And if the net stock is less than the reorder point, there's a recommended order factoring in any item MOQ, any item multiple to take us up to the max. So we can see on this item, we need 23,000 today. Not only can I see what I need today, but that gray band through the graph there that's the variable min-max quantity over time. Variable, 
because the demand is seasonal. Or to think about it more powerfully, we automatically ramp up the inventory ahead of high periods of demand and back down again in low periods of demand. And those red bars, that is what I need to either purchase, manufacture, or transfer every two weeks for the next year. So in terms of um, our slide deck originally, that is how we calculate what needs to be replenished today and over time. And obviously the dashboard is what needs attention today. How we transact that is in the order schedule. So if we go into the order schedule, I get to see a list of all of the suppliers where at least one item needs to be ordered today. Now I can see what needs to be transferred today as well, but we'll stay with the suppliers. And we show the number of items, the quantity, the value, the volume, if we've got that data, the weight of the product, if we've got that data. And this look forward days is used to, to pull forward those red bars in a scenario where your supplier is shut down, Chinese New Year, for example, okay? But, um, and, and this one here, look, you can see the supplier is production line one. This is what we need to manufacture today. But in order to process it, we click on the supplier, create the order. Okay, where we now get to see a lot of information for the 12 items I need to order today. And we can go through and we can make amendments uh, if we need to. But remember, we should be correcting the input, just not the calculation. Um, and we can also see what additional items that need to be ordered um, that are above, above the reorder point but below the max. So we can click on, on here. These items are items from the same supplier where today we're above the reorder point but below the max. And we add any MOQs multiples. I can simply add them on, on mass. Or... I can use this little engine down here to right size the total order and I can set targets. I can do that based on units, purchase order value or order value, volume of the product, the weight of the product. Let's just do something here. So let's say 780 fills a container. This is a supplier comment. It could be added in there uh, as an aid memoir, but we set the target, we click, click on solve, and then the engine selects a combination of top of items that takes us as close to, but not, not exceed that target. So now I'm happy, I'm shipping less air. I'm gonna add that item to my order. <coughs> and then I'm gonna download it. Can either produce a user's internet download, or we can make it uh, be populated back into the requisition workbench, for example where it can be turned into a purchase order in the normal division way. That's what I just wanted to, to very quickly walk through with you. I'd love to give you a, a much deeper dive around this functionality and tailor to your world. Should you be interested, just reach out to Dynamics Consultants and I'm sure they'll be able to arrange that. Thanks very much. Hello, I'm Jesse Lawrence, and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Dynamics Consultants. I work in communications, helping keep customers up to date with the latest news and information from Dynamics Consultants, Microsoft, other software vendors, and also with industry news. I also help people who are new to business software to understand all the details and complexities of implementing a new system, including things like licensing and the process to implement new software. In my spare time, I'm often found with camera in hand, photographing live music, or indeed walking my very, very large dog.